About 2.6 million years ago, Earth slipped into the Pleistocene, the Great Ice Age. As long-term shifts in orbit and axial tilt cooled summers, it let snow persist year after year and allowed massive ice sheets to grow. It began a rhythm that would last more than 2 million years, cycles of freezing and thawing that reshaped entire continents. At their peak, the northern ice sheet stretched from Siberia to the British Isles, over Scandinavia and deep into North America. Glaciers more than three kilometers thick at their deepest points. Global temperatures fell by four to five degrees, but across the northern ice sheets, the drop exceeded 10. Sea levels plunged more than 120 meters exposing vast coastal plains. For most life, survival meant retreat. For others, extinction. But a few endured. South of the glaciers, in lakes that never froze solid, life continued. Slow, patient, ancient. And among those survivors was a predator. A design already millions of years old perfectly suited for what the world was about to become. Its name, Esox Lucius. This is The Ancient Hunter, Episode 2, The Ice Age Hunter. During the Ice Age, vast glaciers advanced across Northern Europe, Scandinavia, Canada and Siberia. Yet even at the height of the freeze, around 20,000 years ago, during the last glacial maximum, not every lake froze solid. South and east of the ice sheets, deep, oxygen-rich pockets of open water persisted, what scientists call glacial refugia. Within these cold sanctuaries, the ancestors of the modern pike survived. Fossils from Romania, France and the Russian steppe show that Esox Lucius already swam these refuges before the last ice advanced. The same elongated body, the same fins set far back as we've spoke about in previous episodes. While other fish perished or migrated south, pike adapted to the freeze. It did not migrate, nor did it hibernate. It simply slowed. It simply endured. In near freezing water, survival depended on restraint. Pike are cold blooded, and as water temperatures dropped, their metabolism collapsed to a fraction of its summer rate. Lab studies show oxygen consumption can drop to one tenth of summer levels. Heartbeats slow dramatically, yet the body remains coiled for attack. Even today, pike feed beneath the ice at barely 2 degrees celsius. Along each flank the lateral line system senses the faint vibrations of struggling prey. Behind the retina, a mirrored membrane, the tapetum lucidum, as we've spoke about before. It multiplies what little light penetrates the ice. The ice hunter needed no chase, it waited. Stillness became strategy. Patience became perfection. Then the rhythm changed again. About 11,700 years ago, the Pleistocene ended. As Earth's orbit shifted, sunlight returned to the northern latitudes. The glaciers retreated in torrents. Sea levels rose more than 100 meters. In their wake, they left new worlds. Basins sourced by ice now filled with meltwater. The Great Lakes of Eurasia and North America were born. Genetic studies trace modern pike to a handful of ancient refuges. One in Western Europe, one in Siberia, and another in North America, where separate lineages have persisted through the Ice Age on both sides of what would become the Bering Strait. As meltwater relinked the continents, Pike expanded rapidly through every corridor of fresh water, every river, 
every lake, every meltwater channel opened by the thaw. Within 10,000 years, Aesox Lucius swam in nearly every northern lake and river on Earth. By the dawn of the Holocene, 10,000 years ago, the ice had withdrawn to the poles. Mammoths, cave bears and sabre-tooths were all gone, but the pipe remained, unchanged. Fossils from the late Pleistocene sediments matched the skulls of living pike almost exactly. Same proportions, same dentistry, same balance of muscle and bone. In evolutionary terms, it had reached equilibrium. Wherever cold, oxygen-rich water existed, pike dominated it. From Scandinavia to the Great Lakes, from Volga to the Yukon. It was one of the few apex predators whose design needed no revision after a million years. Ice had shaped the world, but it had perfected the hunter. The same eyes that watch glaciers crawl across the horizon now watch from beneath the reeds. The same strike that shattered silence beneath the ice still breaks the calm of a modern lake. The hunter never changed, only the world around it. From the frozen lakes of the Pleistocene to the rivers of today, the pike's story is written across every ecosystem it touched. Its patience and power shaped the balance of entire food chains, forcing prey to adapt. Even now, the shadow of that Ice Age hunter lingers in the instincts of its prey. The pike is more than a survivor. It's an ancient architect of waters we fish today. And while the Ice Age still ruled the land, another hunter had already arrived. Early humans stood on frozen banks their breath misting over holes cut through ice. But as the world thawed, those hunters would change everything. In the next chapter, we follow that transformation as mankind takes its place beside the pike and the age of coexistence begins. This is the ancient hunter. If you've enjoyed this journey, please make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss episode three, The Age of Man. I'm Stu, a British military veteran and predator angling runs deep in my veins. It's about wild waters, the chase and a way of life. If you enjoyed this adventure, hit subscribe. And if you want to go even further, join my channel memberships for raw, unfiltered predator sessions and exclusive films you won't see anywhere else. This is Hooked on Predator Fishing. And until next time, stay hooked.